So I needed a new motherboard. I picked up an MSI Big Bang X Power and it kind of got me thinking, and this is the whole inspiration behind this episode, is I wanted to talk about the trickle down effect. Because I was reading through the box, I actually did an unboxing of this board on my unboxing channel a while back. I was looking at it going, okay, it's got all these features. It's got military class this, it's got OC Genie that, it's got a little readout that tells you when it's posting, if something goes wrong. And I looked at the system that I put together based on this board. It's got 12 gigs of RAM, it's got a six core processor, it has dual high-end DirectX 11 graphics cards. And I wanted to talk about how when you build a state-of-the-art system, that is what's called the trickle-down effect. All of that technology will eventually find its way down into mainstream parts at mainstream prices, but here I am, like a sucker, but I mean, I guess we all are, paying a premium for it to get it a couple years earlier. So let's look a little bit closer at this system and talk about all of the different things before we dive into the motherboard. We're gonna focus on the motherboard, that was my inspiration, but let's look at every piece of this system and how it is an example of the trickle-down effect. Okay, six core processor. This is an Intel Extreme Edition 980X. I'm gonna turn the system a little bit so the cameraman can get a better look at it. It's a high power processor, it costs over $1,000, it needs a big fat cooler, but wait a minute. I mean, a few years ago, wasn't a quad core the same situation? You could only get a quad core if you spent $1,000? Well, if you look at this, already Intel's released a six core processor that's cheaper. It's not a lot cheaper, but the 970 is cheaper. AMD has cheaper X6 processors. So within a matter of months, this once premium $1,000 only technology is now trickling down. Okay, let's look at another one. We have GTX 480s. This was Nvidia's flagship GPU, not very long ago. The only way to get a DirectX 11 GPU from Nvidia was to buy a 480 or a 470, both of which cost an excess of $350. Here we are a few months later, and you can get a GTX 460 now, which has almost the same performance, most of the same features, much lower price, and you can even get a GTS 450, which is even cheaper and offers great performance for the dollar. So there's another example. Last but not least, SSD. SSD drives, when they came out, were like 500 bucks, and because, this is the point, because someone was willing to spend $1,000 on this processor, $500 on this graphics card, and $500 on an early SSD with low capacity, now you can buy all of these things for much cheaper. So let's have a look at some of the features that MSI includes with the Big Bang X Power that we can expect to see trickled down. First of all, you've got OC Genie. OC Genie we've already seen on value boards, so that's one that was introduced around the same time as the P55 chipset. This is an X58 board, but it's a brand new one. So even though the X58 chipset is older, this is still a newer board. So let's talk a little bit about military class. Military class is kind of a neat feature because it means that MSI's boards and now many of their graphics cards actually use higher end capacitors, higher end chokes, as well as a more industrial overall design. And the reason for that is to keep temperatures down, make it last longer, as well as to make it run cooler. So that's something that's kind of neat that we can expect to see on many, many boards moving forward. And something else that you'll notice is that there's just basic things like the general layout. You see a complete absence of what? PCI slots. So in the future, we can expect to see boards completely move away from PCI. We also see a complete absence of legacy IO. I have no floppy, see, no floppy port. No IDE port on an advanced board like this. We are expected to use only SATA 3 gigabit per second, which is here, as well as, and this is something we'll see more of in the future again, SATA 6 gigabit per second. And that's not the only sort of uh, futuristic I.O. that you're going to see on a board like this. The last thing is USB 3.0. So you can see the two ports right here. That is something that I think we're going, well, not I think, we will be seeing a lot more of almost across the board. As USB gets cheaper, we're gonna see, just like with USB 2.0, more and more USB 3.0 ports and at cheaper and cheaper price points. 
Since this is a feature showcase more than anything else, I'm just going to show you some of the other features that made me decide to go with this board. Okay, it's going to be that simple. Touch sensitive buttons. I haven't seen this on anything but a premium MSI board. You can actually adjust the base clock with the plus and minus buttons right here. You can turn the board on and reset it with just touch sensitive buttons. So there's no tactile feedback whatsoever. It's a gimmick, yeah, but it is really freaking cool. You've also got voltage switches here. So these are going to change the voltage uh, parameters of the board. I generally don't touch those, but hey, they're there has an onboard post LED readout. It's got V checkpoints, so that means you can actually check the voltage of the CPU, QPI, RAM, uh, IO hub, and the ICH, which is a south bridge, with an actual multimeter instead of relying on software. Other cool features of the board, it does have Dr. Moss, so you can see here they've got their Dr. Moss logo. So one Dr. Moss is, generally speaking, considered to be equivalent to about four traditional PWM phases. So this board, Actually, I think you can count them. You can see all the Dr. Moss phases down there, as well as another six above the CPU socket. So basically what that means is you're able to provide stable high current to the CPU without any interruption. And that's another thing that's cool about this board. It's got two 8-pin CPU power connectors, which means you're almost never going to be limited in overclocking with how much power you can deliver to the CPU. Last thing that I thought was pretty cool, besides the support for 24 gigs of RAM with no hassle, these are actually 4 gig modules, and I do have six of them. They're the uh, special uh, OCZ limited edition ones that I unboxed a while back. Here's another cool thing, CPU phase is up here. You can see it's 16 phase power, so that's 16 Dr. Moss phases, and it actually dynamically adjusts how many it's using. Because when you're under low load, it's better to use fewer CPU phases for efficiency, but when you're under high load, it needs to ramp up how many phases it's using to deliver cleaner power. These lights actually light up for how many CPU phases you're using. So when you're under high load, all of them will light up, and when you're under a low load, only a few of them will light up. Last thing is super pipe. This one, is, uh, it seems kind of trivial, but it looks cool. See the very, very thick heat pipe? That's an eight millimeter thick heat pipe running all the way from the North Bridge through the Dr. Moss logo here and up to the Big Bang logo on the side. So thank you for checking out our little uh, feature preview of the Big Bang X Power. And I'm not actually done, even though it sounded like I was. I just want to show a couple more things. The OC dashboard. So you can use this to actually overclock the board, whether it's in Windows or in the BIOS. And it also gives you a little readout. See, it just plugs into the back of the board right here, and you can have it sit on your desk or whatever you want. It gives you a little readout that shows you if there's any kind of a problem while you're posting or if, it, if things are okay while you're posting. Uh, here are the little leads for the V checkpoints. And uh, last but not least, I guess the board also supports up to three-way SLI. So you can put one, two, three PCI Express 16X, either uh, GTX 480s or 5870s in this board, and they will all run at the same time. Thank you for checking out our showcase, I guess, of the Big Bang X Power. And don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips as well as Linus Tech Tips, my unboxing channel. While we were packing up, I found yet another feature of this board. It actually uses an isolated uh, PCI Express card for the onboard sound. It supports EAX 5.0. It supports Creative Alchemy. So you've got, and this is a cool thing too. The ports at the back of it actually light up for the colors of the plugs that go into them. So the front out here actually has a green light inside it. I have seen this before, but yet another example of the trickle down effect. I've only seen it on 200 plus dollar sound cards in the past, whereas now here it is on an onboard motherboard. And uh, hopefully we're gonna see a lot more of that in the future. You also have digital outputs and now we're finally done.